Uh, good day, uh, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you for the organizers, uh, especially Youssef, for having put together uh, this session. Um, I'm speaking actually on behalf of uh, my brothers, uh, Youssef uh, Torman and uh, Matthews uh, Tumbuka, uh, co MD of ASREN and uh, uh, CEO of the Ubuntu Net Alliance. Well, um, we all know that digital infrastructure is, is very crucial. Uh, I think that uh, COVID-19 uh, has really showed uh, that uh, it, is, it, it is essential that we have this kind of infrastructure, especially for uh, research and, and, and education. Uh, maybe for those who don't know what uh, NRANS, National Research and Education Networks, uh, are about, um, and grants are uh, actually mostly publicly funded uh, around the world. Uh, what they do is that they provide a dedicated, you know, uh, connectivity uh, for research and education uh, uh, institutions. Um, uh, this could be, it's not just about uh, internet actually, because when people uh, often talk about NREN, they think it's about providing internet uh, access, but it's more than doing that. There are many other uh, services that are uh, provided by NRANS. And they are typically connected to regional counterparts, uh, meaning that uh, regional RANS in Western and Central Africa connect to Northern and uh, Africa, connect to Eastern and Southern, et cetera, et cetera. So we are linked also with the uh, global RANS. Uh, you know, uh, in Europe, uh, in Latin America, in the US, uh, etc. And these linkages actually uh, provide the opportunity for researchers and uh, to collaborate together uh, worldwide. Uh, currently, there are more than 100 entrants, uh, you know, in the world, and with 38 in in Africa. Um, well. What, how do we connect uh, the, the researchers, the faculty, the students, etc.? So if you, if, if you look at the, it's actually something like a hierarch, hierarchical. So you come from the institutions like universities, like research centers, etc. They are interconnected at national level and they form a, a national research education network. So, so here we are giving a, uh, examples of Renew in Uganda, of Garnet in Ghana, on Iron in, in Algeria. So, and this national research education network at regional level. So they are interconnected to form the regional research education network. Here, Ubuntu Alliance for Eastern and Southern Africa, Wakren for Western Central Africa, and Astren for Northern Africa, and also for the, uh, for the Middle East, for, for the Arab world, actually. So, and this regional networks are interconnected with their counterparts in Europe, in Latin America, in the US, etc. So who are we at, in Africa, for instance? So we have ASTRAN you know, for Northern Africa uh, with the institution, I mean, with the countries listed there. We have WACREN for Western Central Africa, and we have the Ubuntu Alliance for Eastern and Southern Africa. So, and you see here, for instance, that, you know, all these regional networks are interconnected worldwide so that researchers, you know, in one country or in one region can collaborate with researchers in other region. So you see here, I think that uh, Youssef did uh, share this slide, uh, you know, in, uh, in his presentation. So I won't uh, uh, say more about this. So this is a global research and education network allowing researchers to collaborate worldwide. So uh, this is the history of RANS, regional RANS in Africa. It actually all started uh, mid 2000s with the AUMED Connect uh, project that is, was funded by the European Commission. So this is, uh, then we had the Africa Connect one, and Africa Connect two projects, and now we are going into, we are actually now in the phase of Africa Connect three. And all these projects have been funded by the European Commission, 
And you see here the uh, what we had in uh, 2010, and you see the progress we have made in 2016, and this is what we have in 2019. Of course, this has evolved. That means that more countries are now interconnected. You know, in the uh, regional, uh, in the global research and education network. So uh, this is actually uh, what uh, what was uh, shown in this slide before. This is just to say that today uh, we have 38 African RANs, okay? And uh, uh, you see here the uh, countries that are members of the various regional RANs, Ubuntu and Alliance, here WACREN, Western Central Africa, and ASREN. But we also have to say that ASREN is not just for Northern Africa, it's also for, for the Middle East. So many countries like uh, uh, Jordan or Oman, etc., are members of, of ASREN. And this is evolving, meaning that more and more countries are being connected to our regional realms. So now let me talk about the Africa Connectivity Project. So this is the, actually the third phase of the Africa Connect Project that is being funded by the European Commission. And it started uh, mid-November 2019. It has a duration of four years and with a budget of 37.5 million euros. And as with the previous um, iteration of the project, so the European Commission provides 80% of the total budget and the benefit, uh, beneficiaries, meaning the three regional rents, have to provide the 20% of the total budget. So this is being uh, managed actually at the European Commission by the DG DEFCO, now it's called DG INTIFA, International Partnerships. So, and we have three, four clusters. There is one cluster which is managed by Giant. Giant is the Pan-European Research and Education Network, uh, interconnecting more than 40 countries uh, in Europe. And Giant is actually uh, in charge of the global support and the coordination and also procurement. And then we have the three clusters. Cluster one, Eastern and Southern Africa, managed by the Ubuntu Alliance. The cluster two, Western Central Africa, managed by WACRAN, and cluster three, managed by, Af by ASRAN for Northern Africa. So now, uh, what do we have to achieve with this project? First of all, the overall objective of the project is to enhance human capital development. This is very important. And we have, of course, uh, specific objectives linked to that. Uh, the output we intend to achieve is that first, access of tertiary education and research institution to affordable and adequate e infrastructure. We want to improve it. Second, which is very important, dedicated services and applications for our communities, research and education. Number three, adequate human resource capacity building. It's very important. And number four, that we always, always need is raising awareness, sensitization. So this is something that is very important for government to support research and education. So our activities are divided in work packages. The work package one is regarding upgrade of research education network and infra infrastructure. That means that we want to continue building our infrastructure through daily maintenance, you know, upgrading, etc., cetera, et cetera, and providing cloud-based uh, services. Word package two is about developing services and applications. And we want to highlight here something that is very important is trust and identity services, like EduRoom, you know, for mobility of researchers, of students, etc., and federated identity management for libraries, for instance. And something that is also very important is cybersecurity. So that is one of the uh, elements that is uh, very important uh, to us. What package three is about capacity building. We all know that you know our best uh, you know investment 
is in human capital. So this is something that is very important. And we want to improve our governance through system reviews and have sustainability plans. Sustainability is very important because uh, we have at some point be able to, to move on with, you know, with our own means because the uh, support won't be there you know, for forever. Sharing best practices is something that is very important and women empowerment. So we have a program, a special program for that and to empower women, to encourage them to, to go into steps. What Packet 4 is about advocacy. As I said, this is something that is very important. Advocate, you know, for rents, for research education, and also engage user communities. Uh, because what we are doing actually at the end of the day is about, you know, providing services to the end users. And of course, show what we are doing through visibility and dissemination. In conclusion, what we are doing is actually provide connectivity you know, to recent education communities, mobility services, you know, for staff exchange, for student exchange, etc. having uh, cloud infrastructures in place and supporting open science, uh, especially through you know, our LibSense uh, project, and also engage with research and education communities, such as those that are listed here as example, AfriGeo, GMS and Africa, area, DAA, FAP, et cetera. So how, how are we doing that? Through conference and workshops. Now, as you know, it's mostly remote. Um, we also have to really uh, have a sense of the needs of our, the communities we want to serve, coordinate our activities, support institutions to deploy uh, services like the room, Edugain, et cetera, to promote uh, uh, mobility. Uh, other services that are very important to our institution and promote open science and open science platform. And as I said earlier, support women and empowering them to be more engaged in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, so, here are our uh, activities. Actually, the conf as I said, we organize annual conferences, you know, in our three regional rents. So Wakren had its own in March. This is the, the period where we do our conferences. Ubuntu Alliance is the next coming. It will be in Livingston in, in Zambia in November. And of course, EH in December, that will also be uh, virtual. So that was my talk. Uh, thank you very much.